You know what sucks about getting older? I just went to the bathroom and like, I don't know. I think I used to be able to go like two days without smelling. Mm -hmm. And I just, and by the way, I never wear underwear because especially Corona. It's like I never barely leave my house. But mm. uh, I probably wear underwear like two days a week now because I have these like those sleep shorts, oh. those bamboo sleep shorts things. But when I do wear underwear like I am today, it's like I notice when I pull down my underwear to go to the bathroom, I'm like, oh, it doesn't smell. Like I, you get a little unpleasant smell. Oh. You know, and I'm like, oh, that. By the way, I I didn't shower since yesterday. <gasps> I feel so, like this is rare for you. Yeah, well, no, I shower. I shower every day. Yeah. But it's also like. What does it smell like? Uh, well, like just like you've been working out. You know. Bo. Hmm. Yeah. No. Not. Not. Uh, it's not. It's not bo. It's like something. Like, what are you getting hard, Cass? You look great. <laughs> Cass looks great today. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, but anyway, I guess nobody's relating to that, so let's move on. <laughs> well, I don't know how you can not wear underwear. To me, the thought of like uh, just getting caught in a zipper is scary because that happened to me one time. I only wear. Yeah, a guy can't free ball. I only wear joggers, so never. I, I haven't yeah, had I a zipper on my pants since yeah. I was, you know. But you uh, find. Like, why do you have to dress up for something? If I have to dress up. No, I'm saying like today I'm wearing underwear. I'm saying I wear underwear like only two days a week. Mm -hmm. When I have to go somewhere, I'll wear underwear. But normally if I'm just like, if I have to go food shopping or this, I'll just throw on shorts over the shorts I sleep in, mm -hmm. which are like right. these bamboo, really right, soft, right. like whatever. Yeah. So when I put the, and these ones that I have on today are like real for like the gym, you know? So they're mm -hmm. like really tight, everything. And it's not like I pull my pants down to pee. And I'm like, oh my God. This, uh, but like you could catch a little like, like I'm like, oh. Sure. Yeah. Look, um. Mm -hmm. It's age. You know? I also sleep very hot. Like you wake up sweaty. Yeah, and That's I probably I, got a lot to do. I make it. it 68 degrees, and I still I sweat at night. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I, I'm not like that during the day at all. I I do worry about moisture down there, and what I do when I get out of the shower is I blow dry my pubes. Every day. Well, whenever I shower, every day or every other day. What do you think of that, Jane? I've never heard of that before. Yeah. You want to walk in on old Cass blow drying his is pubes? Is that a thing? Just a quick. Do people blow dry their pubes? I don't think I don't think this is something most people do, but it's something Where'd that- Where'd you learn that? Well, I just felt like, here's the deal. I come out of the shower, I do a, a generic dry off, and then I put underwear on right away. There's still moisture down there. Right. And that can't be good. If you're going to instantly layer up, you know, it's like trapping that moisture. It's going to lead to germs, fungus, germs, mm. fromungus. Do you have a lot of pubes? No, I have Manscaped. Remember when they were our sponsor? <laughs> yeah. <Done. laughs> I haven't Manscaped since. So it's it's getting bad. No, I got the Wait, I got the Manscaped the Lawnmower 3.0. Right, Jamie would do I'm that. I'm not giving them any free ads here. They didn't pay for this, but I have one in the shower and I keep it trimmed, but I'm but I just do a quick like I also blow dry my armpits. Because I, when I roll on the deodorant, I want it to just go on Get and not there. be too watery. So I go. Well, you don't you use a How towel? How long does it take? I do a towel, but I feel like the blow dryer gets an extra. Gets extra. See, I've blow dried my whole body before when I've been like freezing cold somewhere. Oh, that's a classic. That I've done. But that's I've, a classic warm up trick. I've never, never done that. I've gotten out of the shower room and like I'm so cold, and there was like a blow dryer there, especially in a hotel, because they're just like bonk. They're I right do on my the wall. feet. My feet get cold. <laughs> I blow dry my feet. I'm just not resourceful like that. You just do it for what it says on the package, huh? Right up top. No, it's you can it's do so dryer. much. You can do so much. Jamie, speaking of being resourceful, so here's what I want to know, Gabby. Get those pictures ready, because <laughs> you doing too much, Gab. Uh, so if if let's say, like you know times are rough, everybody's struggling right now. Let's say. Here's what I realized: if 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 things went really bad for you, I think that you can go to another country mm -hmm. and just win their you know istanbul's got talent okay like, like whoever it is thailand's got talent because yeah I, one of my addictions is watching those like emotional really? auditions online yeah the singing of auditions. other countries well no but sometimes they put them in there and what i realized is the susan boyle moments right yeah. and Love what, those. what it is is i i don't like the voice I can't relate to for some reason. I never like any of those performances. It's all America's Got Talent, uh, Britain's Got Talent, X Factor, like those kind of shows where I'm like, yeah, I really. Okay. If you guys want to check out 
two of the best is James Arthur's audition for whatever Britain's Got Talent is unbelievable. And the best one ever is uh, this guy does the song Jealous uh, for, uh, I think Nick it's Jonas's Britain, X Factor. No, no, no. A, a different labyrinth. Ama- the, the best audition I've ever seen for anything. But wow. yeah, so my point is, I think because it basically on like Thailand's Got Talent, if you know the words to the song, you win. Like that's the vibe that because when I, you're watching it and it's like, holy shit, this is bad. And they're like, bang, bang, like turning around in their chairs and they're like, you've got it. You know, like so is this a Thailand voice? So what I took pictures of and, oh, no. and had us pull up were some of the judges from other countries that I just wanted to get your Why guys' thoughts on. Why does it say summertime this sadness this is, under this, his face? Yeah, this That's guy's the head song. of the Illuminati here. It's like the... This guy looks Listen, evil. To me, that's... He this does. Is, he looks like a villain in a movie. So to, for people, for the person listening, Jamie, what is what are you seeing right now? Is that a shadow on his face or does he have like... He's like Scar from Lion King. He's yeah. got these lines on his face. Like not wrinkles, like down his cheek. He's got a very interesting goatee. Um, it's long and pointy. That's comes the soul about patch. Two, the soul patch comes about two inches past his chin. Um, he looks like he's really due to touch up his mustache because he <laughs> keeps his mustache about half thick as it should, but like half distance up to the nostril. He's got a huge upper lip, but only half of it or a quarter no, of it's a covered huge, in hair. He has a huge lower lip. This dude should he be He has on... a man, he a only, high ponytail. He only has a, so the actual- This guy's from System of a Down, right? The, the actual lip- Part like his the pink, Very pink lips on the bottom is huge, but this, on top, yeah, this what part. is that the space between yeah, your lip and your what nose? What is that lip. called? Yeah, that's um, your nose pussy. That's the part that's below <laughs> right, your nose. Right, this guy's nose pussy is wild. Yeah, he, it's it's yeah, it's about thirty three percent of it has a mustache on it, and then the top part doesn't. Here's my thoughts he also on has this. No neck. I think this true. I think this is a form of child abuse because. If this guy's picking up his kid from school, that kid's getting abused. Like if if depends where you're from, that might be uh, the look. If this kid came to, if this guy came to my school to pick up a kid, the next day he's getting beat up at school. This guy sleeps upside down. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't does, walk. The he, things he, he does in the shadow. He, yeah, he is a shadow. He, this is. Okay, I really would. I want to watch video. For You're saying this guy's a judge? He's one of the. So, by the way, this is one of like the four biggest celebrities where he's from. In Thailand. Like, he's got oh. it going on. I don't know where this guy was from because I just took pictures of all the best. But it's like, I don't. I, just one thing I think I really got to give it to my parents on like, they never tried to go out of their way with like, getting physical attention by like dressing wacky. Could you imagine what a burden that is? Yeah. Like, like, we're like moms oh. that dress a little scandalous yeah or even just not scandalous. even scandalous but like you know how there's the woman on uh the real housewives who, the mother who has like p- pink and yellow dreadlocks and she oh, wears a yeah. giant gold Bronwyn's chain that's mom yeah and her chain says something on it strange and, and by the husband th- wears the necklace too yeah with like fossils uh, i mean there's uh, she's you know you go to what you're comfortable with well that's so, an unfortunate oh. dress uh, here's it? the next same stylist as claire here's the next photo <laughs> absolutely Oh, it's a shame she has spiders on her shoulders. She's from Thailand. She was a judge from Thailand, but she just... And by the way, this is one of the most famous people in Thailand. Is her elbow broken? It hurts. It it's definitely hurts. Her. She looks like hey, she... You know why? When she puts it down, the sequins probably pinch her pinch her skin, so Ooh, she has yeah. to keep it out. She never thought of that. She looks like she's about to do the walk from the girl in the ring when she yes, walks out of the 100%. well. 100%. So far, all these people drink the blood of children. The yes. adrenochrome. Yeah. All right, what's what's what do we got on the next one? Oh. Yeah, Hell yeah, this guy's style. I feel Sweaty. like you could be this guy for he Halloween. He runs hot like Rob. Yeah, that gold lame is that called lame? I love it if it is gold. With, I mean, those what, look at those crown patches. Yes, the crowns on the lapels of the jacket is wild. And the shoulders. That's the coolest guy I've ever seen. He's got a neck tattoo. What drives what is that? Me? Oh, he has a tattoo over his Adam's apple. There's a Can country, we zoom in on that? There's a country where being this guy makes you it's millions. It's a Transformer tattoo. Oh! Millions oh, of dollars. Oh, he has multiples. Oh, my it's God. It's going he has around an the Autobots neck. tattoo is on his- Is that Black Panther? He looks like a pickup artist, right? <laughs> this guy's got game. He looks like an SNL character. I know that people that put crowns on their clothes are the furthest away from royalty as, <laughs> as humanly possible. Very, yeah. Oh, how about your boy here? 
I like him. The cobwebs. This guy looks like he's dressing up as somebody yes. else. It does not look like this he. This looks actually like a hollow. This is Halloween. Yeah. This is Halloween. Look at the cobweb hanging off his yeah. shoulder. Yeah. What a neckline that sweatshirt has. Just incredible. Oh. There you go. This is more my speed. What, uh, Jamie? I could see you dress like this, actually. Can one my of hair you... is going to be that color in a couple of years. Can one of when you describe? When Rob finally gets married, that's what Kasim's going to look like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will wedding. be the best man. At his wedding. Your hair will be bright white. And the white. mortician at your wedding. Yeah. Can you describe to people what that? He's in a tuxedo with a very high vest with like a a, a chain that goes to his, to his nipple pocket nipple area mm -hmm. he's got like a white hair like cast with a nice side wave mm -hmm. another goatee no stash yeah he looks nice it's just soul patch this guy does 100 percent does magic and <laughs> yes that, that little chain is is ma that's what magnetically like to attached to a nipple piercing that's what we should be guessing is what they're famous for that's yeah. what this yeah. game should have been you know what he looks like to me like um you know that that new HBO show that like there's like a polar bear in it and yeah, he looks like he would you open a door and he's sitting there the doing golden something. Golden Compass, yeah, he's in the Golden mm -hmm. Compass movie for sure. He's got a oh. oh yeah, yeah. This guy fucks on boats. This he, next guy, he this, listens to yacht. This rock. is a steampunk yeah. guy who was told he's going to an award show. I love him. He is the Simon Cowell of whatever country this is. By the way, That's you know what I know about him? Doesn't take himself too seriously. <laughs> no. My suit jacket's blue. Let's see, what should my so undershirt chill. be? Also blue, perfect. This is the first time he's ever not held a cigarette in his life, this guy. His this glasses guy is, are not on right. Yeah, he's like he is Dr. Not, Robotnik. He's actually not awake. He's sleeping there. He's sleeping. Yeah, he could be dead even. He might be dead. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Bernie. <laughs> hey! Happy, you're so happy. I like the mix of patterns. I don't Bold, know why I'd be brave. That. Yeah. The blur, purple mirrored sunglasses. Is that an earring on the right? I'm seeing, or is that just a reflection on the chair? I can't tell. Could whiten his teeth. I, I think the teeth could use a little more than whitening. I, I think that if he would have got the way. those are all his baby teeth. Biggest star where he's from, <laughs> and this is what's going on. He's still waiting for the tooth fairy. Two jackets on indoors. Oh, oh, that bottle of water was for him to eat, by the way, not drink. <laughs> so, oh, look at this little guy. Yeah, this guy is still trying to get in the Black Eyed Peas, and it's 2020. This guy's Craig Robinson's little person <laughs> stunt double. He, his jacket is way too big. Uh, you have to remember when you're very looking at- Very coy. They call me the snowman. <laughs> if you were looking- Yeah, he's like, does anybody have a carrot? <laughs> <laughs> what you have to remember here, if this was saying like, hey, here's some goofy looking people I saw. These are the biggest celebrities- What's this guy famous for? In I wouldn't countries. say this guy's the biggest. He's What's the this smallest guy famous for? He's the person smallest, I've seen biggest in a while. celebrity. What's he famous that for? That jacket's an extra small too. This guy's famous for fitting into a small box, you know, the guys that, <laughs> that contort. He can get himself into a jewelry box. Oh, hey! more, more mixing patterns, cute hat. That's a cool coat. You you got a, you got a little messy with your lunch on your lapel there. Does it give you a hankering for some tapatio, Kes? <laughs> this guy's very tapatio. He's a singer. He's got it spilled on him, and he's got the color in the hat. What about this next guy? Who made that jacket? Oh, okay. who's yes, that? Problema. Who's that, Jamie? Mi amigo, it's Young Cass. This is one of my first YouTube videos. Is that videos. a napkin? I thought I privated this. Well, Can I years watch ago. it? No. Robbie knows how to find. Uh, Cass, Jesus tell, Christ. Would you tell the people what we're looking at, Jamie? When they tell you, like, hey, dude, what was it like before you got popular on YouTube? This is what I was, uh, this is what I was trying it's to a do. Baby Cass. Stupid, um, in stupid a, sketches. In a sombrero. Mm. With a thick black mustache, a red napkin tucked into his white shirt with a fitted nice blazer, mm -hmm. looking like he's seeing something shocking. ¿Qué es tu problema, mi amigo? What is your problem, friend? He, oh, that's he, what I'm saying? He looks like uh, a waiter who is having lunch and they needed him for an emergency for something. Mm. Yeah, yeah. First day on the job. You're very, very. You look very green. Look how far you've come. That's good. Thanks for bringing now you're that, just pulling that up. Sitting here looking at old pictures of yourself. I got Jamie wearing my shirt, and I got myself <laughs> on the screen. This is a very Cassim heavy episode. Let's delete it. Uh, Cass, I wanted to ask you. We talked about on an episode that you had a stalker, and then we just kind of like 
brushed over it and you didn't give us details. I think we deserve details. Man. Should, going off that picture, I can't believe there was only one. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. There, It wasn't like a actual full-blown stalker. I think there was like a couple that were online only and then one person that I would see that I got weird vibes from. Mm. But I don't. The ones online, to be honest, scared me more. You know that Don't Fuck With Cats mm -hmm. yeah. documentary? I think when we talked about when that documentary came out is like, you get a thousand inbox uh, messages. One or two of those messages are like the type of things that that guy in that documentary would say or send, do you know? And it would always be like, ooh, like don't reply to that. That's gonna be, like this person's looking to connect with you and something's obviously very wrong with them. And when you're first starting out, you try to reply as many messages as you can. Um, just like we're doing with pajama pants, mm. or at least Rob on the Instagram on the way home. Um, but sometimes you message somebody who uh, at first appears like they're, oh, cool, like they like what you're doing and, and they're a fan or whatever. And then then they like the, the frequency. I'm sure you, you, you but they, they, they message more. They message more. And then they want, like, they're trying to just sort of wedge their way in and then they're like well can we meet can we do this or like oh you're not responding like oh my god like you know it just <laughs> they take it to a 10 right away and then it's like you know it's but i don't i don't think you know there was one person i would see around and i was like uh like i was told that person was like super into me it was like they would kind of floated in the same circle but i was always trying to avoid but i've never been in danger or felt like i was gonna be yeah skin fillet or anything like that the level of celebrity on youtube doesn't I mean, it's small and it's like a, a micro version of actual celebrity, but the people in it are intense because when you're following somebody online or on YouTube, you can communicate with them as opposed to like maybe watching them on a show and just once a week on a show. And this was before, you know, social media was as big as it is now. So I think the intensity of the attachment people grew was a little bit, um, you know, you know, it was in, it was intense for a while, mm. but you said it was a girl you were sleeping with, who, who you felt like became. Oh, a... yeah. oh, 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 oh! You thought you put that on private too, huh? Yeah, he, yeah. There was, yes, there was a girl yeah. who um, everything seemed like a normal hookup, and then once you, you know, once it hit that we slept together thing, it like overnight changed into like a little bit of a. I'm I'm just kind of doing a uh, a one night you know kind of hang and then in her world it was like, well we should be on Zillow looking for houses you know like mm -hmm. let's figure out what the rest of our life looks together, um, but I that one that one was like very quick to like oh sorry I don't really feel that way and then it was kind of like you know it was she she was bummed out but I didn't really do a whole lot of one night stands so that one caught me off guard you know generally I get to know somebody. Yeah, me too. You know, I just get to know them for about a, about a year or so, and uh, you know, and then, and then I grow on them. You know, then they start wearing my clothes, and it's like then it's like game over. Mm. And then they start looking at Bag houses, them. houses in Austin. Then we start looking at places in Austin. And they're trying to move away. Yeah, uh, yeah, that one. It's uh, that's probably why we didn't get into it. It wasn't much of a story. But I would say if you are in a situation where you're about to have a one night stand, it'd be better to communicate where you're at. I don't know. A lot of guys would be like, "Dude, doesn't matter, dude. Just fuck, just fuck him and leave him." If 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 you want to avoid like a lot of awkwardness, uh, the next day, just be like, "Hey, like we're just having fun, right?" Like, yeah. I don't know. It's time for us to welcome a new sponsor. That's Hello Tushy. Hello Tushy. I just got mine in the mail. Let me tell you something. What a you, day. You guys know if you've listened to this podcast, you know that I am all about asshole care. I am promoting. I used to promote butt wipes. Um, and above just toilet, you do a toilet paper uh, pass through and then you clean up with a butt wipe. Problem is they say flushable. I don't think they're flushable. No, you've single-handedly ruined septic tanks, I've heard. Uh, yeah, plumbers love Cass. Love. So let me tell you what just happened. I got this uh, Hello Tushy bidet in the mail and I was like, oh, this is a small box. It actually hooks onto your regular toilet seat. Of course. It's uh, Listen, uh, getting a bidet changed my life. It's unbelievable. The he confidence about it I have now compared to just wiping 
It's unbelievable. You may be watching this and thinking, wow, it doesn't look like he had water squirted up his ass all morning because I was using all the different pressures on it. Yeah. And I realize I don't like it too hard, but a little bit. Right, because then it starts to come out of your nose. Yeah, because then you start, yeah, like when they rescue people on Baywatch and they breathe life into them and they always spurt out the water right away. Right. That's how you know they're alive. Um, <laughs> let me tell you guys, it saves you 80% uh, of your toilet paper use, uh -huh. and it saved me 95% of my butt wipe use. And the less those things go down the drain, the better my septic tank is, and the cleaner my bub bub is. And that's what I'm calling my butthole, my bub bub. Get 10% off plus free shipping right now at hellotushy.com slash pajama. That's hellotushy.com slash pajama for 10% off and free shipping. HelloTushy.com slash pajama. Or as I like to say, HelloTushy.com slash pajama. Yes. Please. It's the sky. If you're still wiping with just toilet paper, you're We disgusting. all know. We all know. Yeah. You haven't evolved. Happy bidet to you. Let's talk to you about Braddock USA, our favorite sure sponsor in the whole live world. This episode is brought to you by our friends over at Braddock because Thanks. we're going to be wearing masks. It's about to get to be cold time, flu time. We need to protect ourselves and our loved ones and those around us. So you might as well get the most comfortable, breathable, and affordable face masks out there made right here in the USA. Made a premium upcycle t-shirt material. They're so soft, eco-friendly. The only mask that this team wears right here. So now when you go check out their website at braddockusa.com, you will see that they already have great prices. But for a limited time, they are offering an additional 20% off with promo code PJPANTS. That's right. So again, 20% off your entire order with promo code PJPants PJ at B-R-A-D-D-O-C-K-U-S-A.com, BraddockUSA.com. These are the best. I don't even know. I, I don't even know how else to describe how soft and comfortable these are. So soft, super affordable. Super affordable. Put them in every car, machine washable. And, um, you know, you, mass people can they're she, chic. Yeah, they're super chic. And and people that don't like the like feeling around your ears, they've got these uh what do you call these? Face covers. Full on slip ons. Yeah. I feel like, you know, for it's those smooth. of you that are bandana people, easy easy yeah, transition just, into one of these. You can have it around your neck and yeah. then just boop. And winter's coming and it's uh already starting to get winter's cold out. Coming. And th these are good neck ways to warm your neck. Joey, Perino, and Yuri bought some, and they love them. They're the best. They are the best. Just so support the people that support the show, you guys. Thank so we, you. We just talked about, um, what was that, D Don't Fuck With Cats. If you could see a documentary on anything, like if, if, if you could, tomorrow it popped up on Netflix, what do you think would make the best documentary? Mm. I think one thing right now would be if we could get behind the scenes of what's really going on with Britney Spears. Oh, for sure. That would be fucking. Oh, that great. I would be fascinated. Ooh. I would yeah. be fascinated because I've I've had people send me. Have uh, you been watching her Instagrams? I've had people send me a couple clips, and there is a darkness. Oh, it yeah. She's breaks, like, I'm in a bikini now. Like, it really breaks my heart. Well, for those that don't know, you know, Britney Spears, um, she's under a conservatorship. And that means that her, I think her dad mm -hmm. or her stepdad, or I think it's her dad, is like in full custody of her and gets to of her money, and... of her money. But also, like, doesn't he, doesn't he kind of act as like her manager too and like tell her? I just don't think any many do? decisions aren't made without him. Without but him. you know, she's got two little two boys. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, from the people that I know that have known her much of her life. Like, she's a good person. She's a good girl. I mean, I can remember where I was when I saw the pictures of her shaving her head yeah. in that salon. And you're then at, coming at the... I was in Vegas. You are at Kevin Federline's house. Yeah, right. <laughs> and coming at that car with the umbrella. And I remember looking at her being like, this woman is broken. Mm -hmm. Like, something really bad has happened to her. She has she has no control right now. And I my heart was broken and i just i don't know i don't understand i i want to be careful with my words here because i don't ever like to assume but i don't understand mental illness well 
I don't under I, I don't know what she might be living with and what it could be causing. And I just think it's so devastating that there is like a she's not in a safe enough environment or with the people around her that that's, it isn't clear how to take care of her. Like that there's a yeah. fight over things. And this is what money what happens with money. Right. Mm-hmm. I guess when this kind of shit happens. But it just I don't know. Like I, I, I don't giggle when I see these 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 posts that she's making because I'm just like, oh, see, the part of me is like you get one life on this fucking planet mm-hmm. and and dun, to dun, reach dun, the, dun, the dun, peaks dun. that she reached. Yeah. It's like now if you're a little crazy, guess what? Like I, if you look at it as a whole, it's like, well, what I'm a fucking sure she doesn't life. think she's crazy. Oh, no, definitely not. She wouldn't be putting up those. those she but does. It's... She thinks she's having fun and being honest and being her. And she she probably was so sheltered and so censored for so much of her life that now she's like, this is me. This is me with a filter. This is me without a filter. And they all look the same. Well, her. I think her loneliness is killing her. Mm. Well, okay, but there's something that happened <laughs> where her audience was like, hey, Brittany, if like you need help, wear a yellow shirt in your next video or whatever. Yeah. And then in the next video, she was wearing a yellow shirt and she was like, hey guys, I just thought I'd wear my yellow shirt today. And like, you know, it's my fa- one of my favorite colors. And it was like kind of pretty obvious that she was signaling that she was you know, in need of help, but what Maybe do you... Maybe it's like an SOS that she's seeking It was SOS. It, well, that's what, well, I she's guess... She's like locked away in her castle. She doesn't leave her house. Her fan base was, uh, you know, that's how the whole Free Britney thing, I think, recently got some momentum was because oh. they thought, you know, and she could have been, you know, sort of acknowledging that, yes, I read your comment, like, okay, I'm wearing the yellow shirt, like, help, I need help, and, and oh, that, that's a whole thing. I this is all that. allegedly... Yeah, it's on her Instagram. So they were like, wear a yellow shirt if you need help? Yeah. <gasps> yeah, and then she wore one. <gasps> yeah, look at you. I want this documentary. But here's the deal. If she had access to those comments and she could read them alone, why couldn't she just DM someone like, hey, I need help? Because they probably have access to her account. Yeah. Right, but then they wouldn't let her wear a yellow shirt, right? Well, maybe they're maybe they're not deep diving through the, the comments, comments, but maybe they are going through her messages and stuff like that. But who knows, you know? If she's got a phone, she could get she could get a, a text out. I feel like if she she could, has a boyfriend, she has a guy that's with her. I don't know. That's a great question, and um, I don't know how well you know her if you've ever met her in real life. Have you? Um. I've met her, but I don't know her. That's so fun. It's f- so fun how you get to think about that. I just get to know. No, I've, yeah, I've never no, met her. Uh, no, because I'm, you know, Lance is one of my best friends, so I'm trying to think if I ever, yeah. like, met. I don't think I. She was around a lot in the suede days. I don't think I've ever met her. Or maybe I was in, like, a room with her, and it was like, hi, like, right, hi type yeah. of thing. But I've thought... never, like, had a conversation with her ever. I would remember that. I love her. You know, um, there was, during the whole Britney craze in the beginning when she was in the schoolgirl outfit. I think that's when everyone first remembers her, right? Of course. Oops, I did it. Coming again? down that no. hallway. It was. Um, it was the song you were singing. <laughs> didn't was she sixteen? I feel like they really hypersexualized. She was like seven, sixteen or seventeen. Yeah, I think so. And they got her in the schoolgirl outfit, and I mean, can you look that up, Gabby? How old was Britney Spears when she did thing. that video, please? When Christina Aguilera hit the scene, I was like, oh, she's more my speed. Really? Yeah. Wow. The genie in a bottle. You were the only person I knew who, oh, we're going to get emails now. Oh, don't be me, cousin. Um, well, in the back in the day, you were either a oh, Britney you're a one or of the a two. Christina. Yeah. See, everyone I knew was like, Christina. Well, she had the she had the. They probably the couldn't pronounce her last name. What was the first video? Oops, I did it again. was not right. It's, no, that uh, was like, that was her sort of second or uh, even yeah. third chapter. It was a like, KM16, hey, what the fuck? Oops, I did it again. My loneliness <laughs> is killing me. But you and just you just won Thailand's Got Talent, Jamie. I think the first one was called I Did It. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'm just going by Yeah, she but she had a hard body. Hit me, baby, one more time. Yeah, that's the one. So what was that? Nineteen ninety eight? Hit me, baby. It was like ninety eight or ninety. Can you guys think of a documentary you'd wanna I mean just I I would love uh, a full expose on what happened at Roswell in 1947 in July, but just that won't ever come. That information is not going to come to light. So um, com- compartmentalized. Did we get a number on that, Gabby? 98. 1998. That helps me a lot. 98. She's the same age as me. 
<laughs> so in 98, we were 16, 17. 98, I was like in eighth grade. I was in 11th. For, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 98. Yeah, she was, look, she was hot. She had a thing, her, just face. I was more of a Christina Aguilera face guy. Well, I remember she did that one video where she was like fighting in a ring or something where she looked really hot, Christina Aguilera, right? Where she wore right? the chaps? Yeah, I think she did some shit. Fighter? No. Did we get a- Stronger? Did we get an age Fighter. on- Fighter, Fighter. On Britney? If you pull up her Instagram now, right Britney now? Spears, I Britney's, think- Yeah. Britney's 38, because she'll be 39. No, I meant during, sorry. What did it say? Oh my god, she's thirty eight. <laughs> oh damn. Oh yeah, she okay. So same she's age same as age you. Me. About seventeen years old she was. Listen, depending on what state you're in, it's all right, right? Um, it's it's amazing how big of a cult, like the her the following she has is still so large. And I mean, I don't remember the last time she made music. Maybe she made music recently, but her fans are like crazy. They're still crazy about her. I've never been crazy about anything. Like a fan crazy about anything. Nothing. No. Jennifer Love Hewitt, I was like obsessed, but it, it still wasn't like crazy. Never been obsessed about anything. Now I anyone. think about it and I'm like, how could I? There are like adults who are obsessed with other people who they've mm -hmm. never met. I'm like, you're fucking nuts. I had. Except for Pajama Pants fans. Yeah. Yeah, you guys know who you yeah, are. Yeah, but you loved Howard Stern too and all. You love Right, but if you were like, hey, you want to go uh, have lunch with Howard Stern? I'd be like, no thanks. You'd say no thanks? N if you told me any celebrity in the world was in the next room, come meet them, I'd say no. Why? Because I don't give a shit. You're not friendly. No, I'm not. But also, I know most of them don't, like, I know Howard Stern well enough to know I know he doesn't like social interactions. Like, he doesn't like meeting well, people. Well, okay, so you wouldn't want to go because you don't want to put him out. But, like, any, if you were like, yo, Brad Pitt's next door, he wants to say hi, you wouldn't go? Oh, I'd be like, Kasim, go ahead. Yeah, I'd be over there, like, feeling his chest right away. Yeah. I read an article yesterday i don't i have no i know nothing that's going on in the world let me just put that out there first okay. um but i read this like story that brad pitt was dating this beautiful model and i was like oh what's this about oh yeah and apparently she he met her at a restaurant mm -hmm. of her husband's restaurant in like germany and they have an open marriage and like, allegedly he met her there like with the husband and then then she just dated him for a little while brad pitt is a side piece what's i just I, I'm not judging. I just really don't know how you can have an open marriage and like have like somebody you see regularly on the side. Ye, right. I think yes. I would not be okay. I get it. I just think sex is different to different people. I think but the it's dude's not like about in his, like, sex. 70s if you're fully dating somebody, then you're also in another emotional relationship. Yeah. Uh, you know, all my polys out there. Uh, you guys know nothing like that. Yeah, I'm not judging. I just don't. N F E. Just... What is it? N R E. N R E. What's N R E? New relationship energy. Oh. Come on, James. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. By the way, though. Th that's nothing why like it. Why? 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 Pep in the motherfucking that. step. So your mom's house. They had a video of a girl who would say, "Like, there's nothing that excites me more than seeing my partner meet a new person and feeling their N R E." Like their new relationship energy, and they were, the girl was like, "I love when he's sleeping, and I see his phone going off, and like I know that's the other person, and it really gets me wet." But does she ever get somebody? Else? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They they're all, all they're always open. looking, they're always whatever. See, I I it's not for me, but I totally understand it because it's just like, it, it's just like when I used to hear people were getting married, I thought that was crazier than people who were in like three relationships. I'd be like, well, how, why would you ever do that? And now I'm like, oh yeah, I totally get it why you'd want to settle down. It's just, it's just. I it's... just like the idea of having somebody to go through all of life with. Like I just, I I think it, I guess I think it's more romantic of just the idea of looking back at 30 years and being like, look at all the shit we did together. Yeah, that's cool. That's what's romantic. But I also think there's me. a lot of people who would be like, yeah, but how many marriages last 30 years? Well, you know, my not, parents uh, have been married forty nine. Yeah, my parents are right. in the the answer still the early forties. Yeah, but it's not a. I would say it's not a super common thing, or it's like a you no. know, one out of three marriages. Um, and it's I, I'm glad my parents are still together because I think that's rubbed off on me a little bit, even though I can't seem to string a few few months together. Um, but I know that when I do find that partner, or pick that partner, it's like for life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, um, 
I guess I'm like Claire in The Bachelorette where I didn't stay single until I was 37, settling saying, for like, men like that. See, I think you're more just like a penguin. I love Claire. penguins, and my mom's favorite animal is a penguin. They're just so monogamous. I love penguins. Yeah. yeah. So, I did read an article also the other day that a You've been gay, doing a lot of reading, Jamie. A gay <laughs> penguin couple stole a lesbian, lesbian couple's egg. Yeah. It was stole LGBTQ it. penguin on LGBTQ. GPPQ penguin. So there has been same sex (laughs) penguin relationships that they have found, and they are gifted eggs or take eggs from heterosexual couples so they can have their own baby. And there was a lesbian couple that had an egg, and when it went unattended, they stole it. There must be a lot of plastic in their water because that's where all all that comes from. It's all that (laughs) microbeads. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when we were using Dove, (laughs) Dove microbead body wash for a good 10 years? All that's there. Oh. That's when Casa made those questionable videos. That's when that's when those YouTube videos <laughs> ¿Qué, kicked in. ¿Qué pasó, mi, ami- mi amigo? <laughs> ¿Qué es esto? What, uh, I also think maybe the best documentary of all time would be like a traveling carnival. I would love to fucking hmm. know like them going from town to town. To, like, Do they I still just, have those? Oh, yeah. When, when, I, when I see the guy... Like the Mizarab who's working the fucking game. Oh. Yeah, who's like sitting up on the desk and he's like, yeah, $3, he gets you five balls. Like that guy, I want to go home uh, oh. with that and be like, oh, okay, he's like packing up the the stuff and he's like, he's, he's like, yeah, we need to order more balloons for the, the, the uh, clown heads for the squirt guns, you know? Like mm-hmm. I want to know all this. I want to know who's sleeping with who. I want a documentary and behind the scenes of a theme park. Of like Disney World or yeah yeah or Universal Studios yeah I want to see Groot take his costume off and see the beef he has with Bugs Bunny or whatever watch him smoke a cigarette there, even on that that same tip is like every uh, Halloween Horror Night season at Universal how like all the actors in town go audition and go try and become zombies and how like, do you audition oh I'm sure just like any other role but like. These guys sometimes uh, it's like the only gigs they get all year, and they they rock. They don't break character. They're like super. I saw one guy break character once. I'm like, hey, don't break. <laughs> Otherwise, these guys are told not to break. They have. They, there's a super stringent set of rules to be one of these zombie guys. I would love to. They by can. The way. T- they touch you. I don't think they're allowed to touch you. You're not allowed to. And touch they get as close and with sounds and as as they want, but I don't think they touch you. I've At never been. Six Flags in Jersey, they were allowed to touch you because I remember when That's you would. That's not okay. When you would be on that haunted hayride, they would grab your ankles. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's part of why I get such joy at it. Halloween Horror Nights is my favorite theme park. Anything to go to. I've gone every year for the last. I don't think I can we do went it together because I can't year. run. We went together, and and part of COVID. Well, what'd uh, you say? I don't think I could do it because I can't run. Yeah, yeah. I, I never, I never they'd be moved salivating. more than like two miles. They'd, they'd be, be all, they'd come scare me, and I couldn't. I'd freeze. I wouldn't be able to yeah. go anywhere. Yeah, we just can't nightmare. scare this girl. She's unscarable. I'd have to have like a sign that'd be like, "Don't when come When you know near they her. can't touch oh, you, please, it's, let's go. It's a little bit of relief, you know, because it's like ah, I like to get, I, I get like that to get you. spooped. Yeah, yeah I like I, it. it's it's a release of energy. I yeah. get it. But then when we went last year, uh, you know, we were with some people who were legitimately scared. And wanted to like not participate in the whole thing, you know. They didn't want to go on the rides or just like, hey, can we go home now? And I'm like, I'm just hitting my high. Like I'm buzzed. Yeah. I'm buzzing. Yeah. They got all these like fake chainsaws and they're coming revving them in your ear. So and fun. Blood everywhere. When and... Bo is old enough and older, you I'll let you take him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll bring him and that teacher he's fucking. Yeah, we'll just fucking yeah. go nuts. Hell yeah, dude. Um, this is uh, Cornerstein. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what? Uh, so I was I was watching um, Married at First Sight, and this guy was putting his shoes on. He put his sock on, put his shoe on, Ugh. then put his sock on, put his shoe on. What a psycho! Interesting. That's what I thought. I was like, I've never have. Is that normal anywhere? No. What a psycho! No. This guy's gonna be torturing animals next step, and then people. That's kind of crazy to have a bare foot and a laced up shoe on the other foot, right? Yeah. That's something like a kid would do. Right. And you have to tell them like, hey, stupid, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, that's when you start beating your kids. It's because of stuff like this. You know, oh. It's totally okay. If You know, you always got to go by the, if the zombie apocalypse were to happen right now and everything that was on you in that moment, would you be able to survive? 
right? So you're saying, would you rather a sock and a shoe or two socks? Yeah, two socks. <sighs> That's tough. Two socks. You got to. You've got to be even. When you're running, you got to be even. You know? You can't have one foot with a Doc Martin and the other one just bare. I would do two shoes, no socks. Not an option. Well, you got... <laughs> but I'm not wearing socks. Okay. Well, she doesn't wear socks, so but she they, got but around you would that. Only, you would only have one shoe on at the at the moment, you know? He's saying, like, zombie apocalypse comes, you're one shoe on. I just grabbed the other one. Put it on when I had a minute. Wow. Ma so God, so amazing, goddamn Jamie. smart. And also so <laughs> fucking beautiful. <laughs> You blow me away. So are are either of you? Uh, I wish we had pizza right now. You like, look like you would eat I'm a pizza. So this hungry. flannel, this whole vibe that you're putting out right, you look like you could scarf I a pie. I could scarf. I, oh my god, give me a Pizza Hut personal pan. Like, right let's now. listen to Nirvana Unplugged and let's just scarf a zombie. Indigo dude. girls. You also look yeah. like Kasim's type. You look like you might have a cabin up in Big Bear, because that's what he likes. By the way, did you go to Big Bear? Re you know, recently, a few weeks ago, yeah. A few weeks ago? Yeah. Which As which, you're listening to this. With uh, a girl who he's broken up with? Jamie, would you, what is, what's the? I didn't know that. Still, still broken up. Mm, but you're taking kind of vacations with her? You went alone her? together? Well, yes, us two and the innkeeper. Who's that, the dog? There's a big man who, who sits at the front desk there. He says one, two, <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> He's a Trump supporter too, which is cool. Uh, Big fan. Have, have either of you, uh, are either of you members of the Mile High Club or no? Mm -hmm. No, not even the Mile Alone High Club. See, that's what I was going to bring up. That I am. And I, and I think Jamie might have even been there when I joined it. Hell yeah. Jamie, you're responsible for this sticky situation. Let's go to Rob for the details, Rob. There? Yeah, so, you know, we've talked about this before, but HBO used to fly us out for, like, the Emmys and stuff like this, and a lot of times me and Jamie, she's throwing up. A lot of times, I'm yawning because I want pizza. A lot of times, that's a tell. Mm -hmm. A lot of times me and Jamie uh, would ask to be on the same flights and stuff so we could hang out, and our parents would hang out, and then we'd hang out. And I remember they would give us, this is before... Like, uh, you know, they had screens on everything. They would give us in first class, like, your own personal yeah. DVD, DVD player, player. Mm -hmm. with, like, 25 DVDs. And I remember they gave us uh, American Pie, like, right when it came out. And I was like, oh, shit, I haven't seen this. So I'm sitting there watching it. And I think I'm watching it next to – I might have even been next to you. Yeah, we always sat next to each other. And uh... Shannon Elizabeth yeah, in that movie when she's naked – it blew my mind. Gabby, what year did American Pie? She went from nobody to somebody in like the second act. Her body at that time was the best I'd ever seen. It still could be. I mean, it was. But her boobs are fake. F yeah, but they look real. I know, but they you've seen look... better. You've seen better. It says 1971. 1999. Okay, so um, so this is post hit me baby one. No, this is <laughs> I'm eighteen. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm about fourteen. Fourteen. So I remember watching it on the little DVD player and an instantly boner, and I'm yeah. like, I gotta do something about this. So I just walked to the bathroom, jerked off on the plane, kept watching the movie, and then I remember when we were in LA. I we're like going to the red carpet at the Emmys, and I remember thinking like, I can't wait for that flight home. Because I can't wait to watch her naked again and to jerk off. Did you take the DVD home? No, you can't. No, you can't. You gotta take have it. some How they gonna class. know? Have, have some class. <laughs> <laughs> Just spooged all over the. Yeah. Uh... This is why he sits in fucking coach. Jesus, dude. Was it a quick one? Uh, yeah, yeah. Dry. Dry, you know? quick. Yeah. yeah. The desperate jerk. Yeah, I know. I know guys who will like use their own spit to jerk off. I don't. I don't do that. I'm not down with that. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, you get a good friction, you know, good lubrication for the first few seconds, and then it just turns. It makes it even Then harder. you just got your own spit on your dick. Then you're just a dirty little bitch. Yeah, then you're just a guy standing in an airplane bathroom with your own spit on your dick, then wondering you look, where you it all went wrong. You look at yourself in the mirror, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who are you? Uh, right, James? You ever do anything like that, James? <laughs> Would you watch uh, Magic Mike? And to get up there? Scratch yourself no, I was to pleasure. Probably watching Dirty Dancing. Or Women something. scratch themselves down there. That's how they do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really are. Did uh, and there's also a lot of guys who have tasted their own jizz, and I feel Ugh. like Casim's Casim no. could be one of those. No, dudes. never. 
No? Never. I won't even, if a, a girl swallows, I give just lip, lip if she wants a kiss. You've only tasted other guys just. <laughs> I've only tasted, you know, something special in that case. No, it's gross to me, you know? I hear it's salty. Oh, James, so come on. Be, you, you've let's been you've been it. real absent today. She's a Disney dude. I know you want pizza right now. Let's let's tame that hunger. Can you okay. you wanna grab a Snickers? Out of all the something. jizz bring me something. Out of all the jizz you've tasted, Ugh. is there a range of like flavor or no. does it all taste the same? Same. And it's all disgusting. Yes. Like would a Hispanic mm -hmm. man's be spicier? No. Okay. Or an Italian man's greasier. No. Does the, old I can go <laughs> does the old pineapple juice trick work? No. Have you tried it? I mean, I don't, I know, but I don't think, I don't see how it would work. Are you a doctor? <laughs> yeah, no, Dr. Fauci yeah. over here, huh? Yeah. We know you're a sex expert, but. Oh, sorry, Jame. Somebody was telling me about um, <clears throat> yeah, a sexologist. It. They have these people that will help you figure out like your sex language. Oh, okay. For couples. I think that's really interesting. How many sex languages are I would, there? I don't know. I think we should get one on the show. I think it, I would love to learn more about this because people get, it's like what turns you on, where's like, and it, it helps you to like communicate better with your partner sexually. Oh, yeah. That would be, that'd be great. Well, as a woman, what turns most women on is doing the stuff that Cutter doesn't do, right? Basically, oh, when, when you try and hug him and he says, ugh, what do you want me to hold you? That that could be a turn off. There it is. Here's the sex languages. Fun, desire, pleasure, patience, acceptance, celebration. I can tell you it's never been fun. Uh, yeah, put me down for pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. you know there are. People, I'm not doing it for acceptance. <laughs> there are people. Some people who are. like pain. No, there's people who like pain with sex. I'm fucking... not doing it for. God knows, I'm not doing it for patience. Patience. That's wild. That's all chick shit. I mean, if patience counts, like, hold on, I'm trying not to. Like, one more minute. Yeah, yeah I guess that's. that's a She's form like, would you get hard already? I'm like, have some patience. Hey. <laughs> Acceptance uh, is person who has an acceptance celebration sex language wants to know you accept and celebrate all of who they are. During every phase of sex, they want you to appreciate all they are to you, not just their body or sexually. Being valued makes sex more satisfying for this person. Man, that sounds oh, like a lot of work. A needy broad. I've, I've heard. Of, I've heard of that. <laughs> no, but I think there's other languages that are like meaning like kinky um accept and celebration it's like you want me to kiss you up here i'll kiss you down here i like it. i like it. i like those parts <laughs> can you go to desire what's desire the desire sex language person sexuality is heightened if they feel pursued and wanted they love you planning their sexual time and encounter Ugh. their pleasure is really you wanting them sexually yeah yeah desire i will wait outside your home for you to come come home from work <laughs> and i will chase you in your house <laughs> I desire you. <laughs> Can you imagine dating Casima coming home? He just chases you. <laughs> we don't even have to know each other. What is fun, Jame? The fun sex language person's pleasure is accentuated when you mix fun with sex. This person is going to enjoy spontaneity, various locations, and creativity all phases of, during oh. all phases of sex. Sometimes I'll, I'll wear a fun hat. My sex language is lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go nowhere. Preferably one position, if not the one I'm in at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I put the clown nose on, honk it. Well, I think she helps you understand what, from what I understand, she helps you understand what turns you on. Um, Vaginas. Yeah. When they're wet. Just mark me down <laughs> for for pleasure. <laughs> you know, I think that's you know there. I I do feel like men are more straightforward in that, and I feel like that's got to be something more that women. more women are going to yes, be. Yes, yes. If we're going to do a, yeah. No, I actually think women are pretty straightforward too. Guys just don't want to put in the, like they're very That's straightforward about what they what they want, what makes them, like I remember a girl saying um, like for girls, foreplay starts the second you wake up in the morning. You know, like where with, with oh, guys, boy. it's like foreplay. So like if I'm watching TV, 
foreplay could start. I'd be, I'm ready for sex in a minute, you know, or with girls. It's like, yep. hey, I brought you, I did this really nice, I pulled your car out yep. for, I got it clean. And th- like, that's all You're taking like, notes all day. Yes, that's true. If Cutter's doing a bunch of nice things, I'll be like, all right, I'm going to have sex with him later. That's why I don't want to get graphic, Jamie. I'm sorry. But the wettest girls I've ever had were the young ladies. And I, when I was young, and you know, we're all young. I mean, by and he young. measures your wetness. He has a, a very specific way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sensitive today. Clearly. Um, were the girls who I would meet them at a club, or we would be out at a club and start dancing at like one in the morning, and then not have sex until back at my place at like four in the morning. So it's like you're dancing for those three hours. Oh yeah. And that's where they're Those really getting. Those underwears are yeah. trashed by the time they are in the bedroom. Or throw them away. Listen, one man's trash is another man's no, treasure. No, dude, she's been soaking in her own juice. She's been marinating all night oh. and Italians dancing. Love and it's that. like squish, 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 squish. You know. Hey, you marinate your chicken, right? I absolutely do. That makes the best chicken. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want it marinating. Absolutely. You don't, but but you do throw away the bag you marinated. I throw away the bag and I blow dry my pubes. <laughs> How long do you blow dry your pubes? Very quick, because if you're not careful, you'll singe. You'll oh. singe yourself. Really? That's a hot blow dryer. Oh, it gets, I got an ionic. Uh, you can press the cool 2400 button. 2400 watt. Oh, I keep it on hot, hot, hot. <laughs> During the summer when it gets cold, I'll turn it on the cool button, you know, and use mm. it as a mm. sort of a fan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, if you don't watch this pod, shame on you. This has been one of the best. We got to get to some emails. Before. Yeah, let's okay. do it. Uh, do you agree? Yes. Let me reach it for you there, oh, see, Kurt Cobain. This, this is what, um, what's the guy who ran the Nexium? Oh, Keith, Keith Rainier. Keith Rainier. This is what he was talking about with women, where you see when it was time to read the emails, what did you do? You just pointed at the emails because there's two men here. And one of them are going to go, oh, my God, for, for Jamie? Like that. And, and he said that's what builds up the anger in men towards women. That I just did that for you? Yeah, because you're like, oh, there's, if, if there were two girls sitting here, you wouldn't have done that. Yeah, I would. No. The reason why you did it is because there's two He'll men He'll tell here. you how you feel. I'm not far enough in the valley yet to know that. Yeah, so. okay, I finally finished it. And basically uh, what he was says is Was the finale like, as good as everyone said it is? Or it was fine? What are you talking about? I mean, it doesn't stand out. I can tell it you didn't? that. did Okay. But, uh, yeah, what, John? Hey. First of all, hey, what's up, Jess, Kasim, and Rob? Who's <laughs> Jess? We got a loyal fan here. Who is Jess? A big I listener. love it when it's not my name that's screwed what up. What is happening? You I guys found you Jess? through YMH, though was a Kasim G fan for years ago. No, hell yeah. Been of course wanting this to is write an man. email for a while and finally thought of a good question. I'd say my personality type is sort of a mix of all three of you. Who, Jess? <laughs> so obviously I'm pretty great, but problem is selling myself. I'm pretty proud of how well-rounded I am as a 27-year-old guy, but I find it really rare for someone else to see me the way I know I am. In the age of swiping, I find it to be a total nightmare. I simply do not get matches, but I know for a fact if I were to meet a lot of these girls in person, it would go really well. I just wanted to know your hot tips for online dating and how to stand out more and meet someone I actually will like. Look, I'm not a hot guy, I'll admit that, but I'm at least a six or seven and I dress pretty well and I take care of myself. I fancy myself to be smart and interesting. I've lived in Australia for two years. I play guitar well and write songs. I know how to cook. I do my own oil changes. I have an engineering degree. I even do yoga okay, sometimes. Enough. Cass was ready to But fuck no right one now. seems enough. to give a damn on dating apps. It's all about having stellar photos. I've never yeah. been a let's pose for a pic type of person and now it's Same. fucking me over. And Cassim, have you seen Black Santa? Cheers, hmm. Taylor from Canada. No, I haven't. I think I'm not answering because you um, didn't ask me. Look, uh, look. There on paper, you know, this guy sounds like he's got a lot going on, right? I'm not on dating apps, but I have friends that are, and when they aren't getting swipes, I find it's because they are the pic. It's the pictures. The picture. Well, that's what he's saying. And how does he take a better picture? And when if they do get a swipe, the girl they go out and the girl's almost disappointed, you know. I've got to say the only advice I can even come up with is have a picture that's representative of how you look in real life and just make it look like you're doing like you're happy and like you're you know you're yourself. You're happy changing your oil. You're totally. happy cooking. You're happy writing a song. Right. Well, here's what I think. Maybe he doesn't listen to girls because your name's Jamie. Mm-hmm. And he called you Jess. Our number one feminist over here. He loves the podcast. Yeah. Like Jess and Jamie are different. 
That's yeah. a different name. One yeah. is only four letters. But but uh, another here's my tip for you is, um, uh, one of two things. One, you could lower your standards maybe, and maybe start just to just to get out there, just to start see see what happens. Maybe you meet a girl, you just become friends, and you meet her friends, blah blah blah. But another thing is, have a girl who is your friend. So if you don't have any girls who are friends, you need to make some by lowering your standards. Then uh, have that girl choose your pictures for you. Because girls, advice. there you go. Yeah, girls good are advice. really good at that. Like, yep. there's been times where I'm like, "That's a good picture of me," and girl, and girls are like, "No, dummy!" Like, that's not. Yep. You know, like, like a guy will be like, "Oh, I had like, you know, my hair was gelled perfectly, and I'm in this like sports jersey," and and they'll uh, be like, "No, you look like a douche." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a girl's like, "No, you want it like where you don't look like you're trying." Like, here's what I've noticed. When I would go to things where I would be in like a really dressed up or like a tuxedo and think like, wow, this is really bad. I never got girls. When I would get girls is when it would be like I I had been up partying for two days and I showed up somewhere and like my hair is just a mess. And I'm just I don't give a fuck. Because you were the bad boy. Yeah, but also you just you don't give a fuck. And a girl goes, oh, I know what I could do with him. Where when a girl sees you in a tuxedo, she's like, oh, this is the max. Right. Like, this is the best you're ever going to be. Am I really that yeah. turned on to you? Whatever. That's a great point. If you're a six or a seven. Uh, in a tux. In a tux. Ain't you know, that's you're closing, closing in on that seven. But if you are in your regular clothes, you know, you're leaving room for the imagination. And if you are a six or seven, you should be shooting for sevens and eights. You know, don't don't look at Don't even look. Think about a ten. Don't look at a nine. Try and try and work your way to a seven or an eight. I think, um, you know, may, and and I love the advice of having a female. Great advice. And have a female set you up too. If you're going to go to all that trouble, if you have female friends and you are a good guy and have a lot of things, ask her for her. Mm -hmm. You know, I have some friends that, um, you know, that only see the best parts in me, and they're great friends. And then they're like, oh, you should see, you should talk to my friend this person. And that's like it's already all the awkwardness is already kind of like somebody's vetted you already. That's. That's the best way to do it. Yep. I love it. Okay. Thanks, Taylor. Hi, everybody at PJ Pants, except George. Yeah, I found your- George. That's Don't worry. A hi to everyone at PJ Pants. George is not included. Yeah. He's, yeah, not, he's never right. here. Who's George? We've yeah. taken his name off the masthead. I found your podcast when Kasim appeared on Tiger Belly. I completely fell in love with his personality and had to go and give PJ Pants a listen. Thank you. I must also state that his looks played a significant factor in the fact that I gave you guys a listen. I've been obsessed what? with the podcast ever since and have been watched every non-guest episode about 10 times each. Not kidding. I had no idea wow. what The Sopranos were before, so discovering the amazing people who Jamie and Rob are has been a real treat. You two are so sweet, and your amazing personalities make PJ Bands the best podcast in my book. The weird drug sex stories, the UFO and Sasquatch stories from cast, the reality oh, TV yeah. rants from Rob, and Jamie's anecdotes are the absolute best. I'd also like to take this opportunity to beg Kasim to make an Instagram account for Kai. Please, 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 I beg of you. Oh, she's pushing all the right I love you guys. Right Bye. P.S. I want you to put a face to the email. Here's a little picture of me. Look at this cutie, Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Not bad. Let me see. <laughs> Hold on. I'm still liking I'm liking it. Gabby, when I look, blur my face out. <laughs> She's so go. cute. Oh, she, you just got a little what kiss. What a great email. A little Thank kiss you, Sarah. From Ke oh, she is cute. And she is she on a lake? Looks I... like it. She likes nature. You like bodies of water? That's Sunny. a nice yeah. toss. Uh, what a lovely email. Thank you so much. Such a nice email. Everyone that's ever come over from Tiger Belly, thank you. People do say to us a lot, like she said, oh, we love the episode with, with no guests. We want more episodes with no guests. But- the way that they always find us is somebody was either on here or we were on somebody right, else's. So right. that's that's what you got to do. Unless you guys go and tell everyone, everyone you, know you know to listen, you're going to have to put up with episodes with guests. So it's mm -hmm. your fault that there's guests on the show. Tell more people. We like we having guests, guests, but we, I also no, really I like these episodes where we get to actually finally read your emails. We, <laughs> we, get, we get complimented. I think that's a big part of why I like it. Yeah. This one's a long one, but I think it's worth it. Ready? Yeah. Hello all, hope you're well. I sent a couple of emails before, but sadly got no readout mentioned. But it's okay, I'm not bitter about it. Today's your lucky day. As bad as this sounds, I would love a birthday shout out to me. Yep, sounds bad, doesn't it? But it's the only thing at the moment that will make me smile and plow on in a tough world. Birthday is November 2nd. 
Happy birthday, Ahmed. Ahmed, happy birthday. Happy birthday I also Ahmed. have to say, thanks for everything y'all do. I love the podcast. Said many a time that it's one of the only podcasts I watch and look forward to. I don't have time to watch or listen to anything else, literally due to my nature of work and the long hours I work with very little sleep. I have such love and respect for JLS. It should be and is Jamie Lynn Sigler with the hyphen. Thanks for telling me. And Rob. Thanks for what you do and what you've done in Sopranos. I'm surprised that Rob is not watching and really ought to. I mean, come on, man. Set for life. You folks have such great talent from doing what you did and this podcast and many more. Multi-talented, genuine, authentic people are down to earth and humble. That is a rarity these days. For a long time, I felt very alone and isolated because such intellect and like-minded people do not exist around these days. Tell me about it, brother. But having come across your podcast a few months ago truly gave me hope and has totally made me laugh out loud even the deepest and darkest of times for me. Thank you for touching me and many others. And Cass, I feel sorry and bad for you with your breakup situation. I totally feel and see the difference, like a light switch for the better. This is a long one. I totally understand. <laughs> I have been and still like am it. doing the best I can to limit the damage fallout. As not a bad guy, I'm too nice it seems when people say it's an abusive marriage and trying to finally get the courage to move away from it. Thought of that, the little glimmer of hope and light definitely changed my perception and attitude of a few things, which I also saw in you when you unfortunately broke up with your gal due to differences and other factors. Mm -hmm. It only reinforced my thought and outlook. I want to be that guy. You, Cass, are that guy. Wow. Keep up the great work. I really wish I could give each and every one of you a big hug. You're all nice and sweet as can be. Can't thank you enough. Well, happy birthday, Ahmed, and thanks for the yes. nice. Even happy though your birthday. birthday passed, happy birthday, buddy. Well, you know, we'll hurt Gabby for... Uh... Sticking on the bottom somewhere, but what a great, uh, what a great email, and um, you know, to the point of you're that guy. Sometimes you know, I see people that I go, oh man, wouldn't it be nice to just have what that guy has or be what that guy is and have the things that you know. But you have to remember that somewhere in the world, there's somebody saying the same thing about mm, you. Yep. Yep. Yeah. If this poor schmuck is thinking that he wants what I have. God bless him. But, uh, you know, and I and I wake up, sometimes I wake up in the morning just like kind of like, oh, here we go. Here's another one. Here's another day. But sometimes I have good days. It's an upbeat cast that I love. Upbeat cast. So, uh, no, that's really nice. And, and I love the fact that um, we can talk to people in this way. And, and I'd love to do, tell me what you guys think about this, but I'd love to do some sort of live version of this pod yeah. once. No? I just think it's going to go bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's that upbeat Rob. That's yeah. what we like. Well, we try and do so many things like merch and do a vlog. And and every time we try and do it, what happens? Absolutely nothing. Well, let's try and do one. So I think try and putting that together. Well, let us know I if you guys would be interested. For the merch. I'm still oh, waiting. No, of course. I'm just saying it just happens to be that, that things are not happening, which is fine. But I'm just saying I think putting together... You know, with a combination of not enough fans, what we have to offer, they, like it's like, I don't know. But I, anyway. I think we have just the right amount of fans. Here's, I have a question for you guys. What, um, what, what do you think, when you think about like people, what do you think the closest thing is that we have to like people who have superpowers? Oh, um, you know, like Rain Man type people. Mm-hmm. Autistic people that, uh, have the ability to like f have photographic memory. Recall like. Uh -huh. so much information yeah or that guy that like got into a like, had serious head trauma and then like woke up and could play the piano or ninja warriors yeah, yeah. Or he could speak he could there was somebody who like woke up from a head injury and could speak a different language totally which is one of the things because i was i was watching the um unsolved mystery on the tsunami and how there's like ghosts uh that from the tsunami and all this stuff and i was thinking about like i'm watching it and obviously they're speaking japanese I'm like, how are there people, because I've met a lot of people uh, when I was growing up in New York, who'd be like, oh, I learned English by watching American right, TV. Right, yeah. I could have watched that documentary a thousand times. I wouldn't know one word. That, to me, is fucking nuts. Like, when you see people who are like, yeah, I just, I learned uh, yeah, it's uh, very hard. a whole language by watching Seinfeld. <laughs> how the fuck do people do that? Yeah. Hey, Rob, I'm from Pakistan. Hey, well, on us to the well, news programs, they're heavily narrated. So it's not so you're watching when you're watching television programs, you're watching the situations. So you can kind of tell maybe what they're talking about by their emotions, by the music and narrating things. It's probably harder. It's it's so it's just but I crazy. agree. Learning a language 
especially as an older person and not a child, is v- another language is very hard. The uh, and the other thing that I was that I really think is like my grandfather worked, you know, every day of his life, never late for work, never had an alarm clock. He had like an internal clock where he could be like, oh, you got to wake up at 6 a.m. and he would just do it that day. Never late. He could do. How the fuck do people do that? Yeah. I have nothing that comes even close. I'll sleep. I sleep through alarm clocks. Oh, I I usually wake up before I know I have an alarm. Really? Yeah, because I'm afraid I'm going to sleep through it. It's that anxiety. Right, but I, but there's a difference of like, because sometimes that happens to me, but it's like, I'll wake up every hour. Yes. But I'm talking about my grandfather would be Just like, wake up on the time. Oh, I'll sleep eight hours, wake up at that Amazing. exact time. And then I was thinking about, so clocks have been around for what, like six, 700 years? Clocks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or where, where people <laughs> yeah. where people had like yeah. access to- At post sundial era? Where yeah. They, yeah, probably. So it's like, what the- f- what was how were people waking up before like i don't know i just find it all fucking it just seems it just seems what like if a thousand years ago if it was like hey meet me it was only like what sun up high noon and sundown sure i bet yeah i mean look i'd love a a reality show or some sort of show on the discovery channel where you go around today's episode rob investigates clocks yeah I'd like um, to clock you sometimes, you know. Yeah, no, I know. Hey. Uh, we're getting the signal. We're getting the signal from uh, Bryce that we're we we can't afford any more time to record. Man, like, it just even goes with, by, doesn't it? Even with this all those one emails, flew. this one flew by. We yeah, we got to get through more emails, but also um, a great way to talk to us, or, or specifically Rob, is on our Instagram. Yes, and uh, Rob answers your uh, your DMs and your messages, and and uh, on our ride home usually. And uh, find us on Instagram, and you can also find us on YouTube. On this video, if you're watching, hit subscribe, click the notification bell. And Jamie is on Twitter and Instagram. I'm on the same thing. We have a subreddit, r slash pajama pants podcast. Always lose so much energy on this part. Well, because well, you, we leave it to you, so we just give up. But see, here's the difference, right? When Jamie does the commercials, we let her go. She doesn't lose steam. You lose steam. I know. Steam. Yeah, I'm oh. just, you know, I don't like promoting. Yeah, but you do it very well. But when well. they're paying money, great. Hey, Addis. Do people, do people subscribe to our YouTube channel? Do we have a problem with people not subscribing? Should I, do we got to send some people? We got to ask Subscribe. Them. Hit the like button. It's always good. You know, when I was on YouTube back in the day, you'd be surprised at how many people watch but don't subscribe. And they, they're like, oh, yeah, I guess I'll hit the button. Oh. And that's what you guys are to me, that guy. Well, yeah, let's, uh, hit the, hit the fucking button. Uh, uh, I guess I'll click the notification bell. Yeah, don't want you to try that. Why don't you try that? And I want you to leave a comment, a nice one, you know, not about how I'm uh, trapped in the closet or how Jamie's on her deathbed. It doesn't have to be nice. In the In the algorithm, it's all the same. You know, so people think they're doing bad. Thanks. Appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one, guys.